After spending a few days in Spearfish Canyon adventuring, enjoying the waterfalls, and, of course, the dipper, I moved on and started to head home. On the way out of the Black Hills, I made a slight detour to the Crazy Horse Memorial. It turned out to be more of a stop than I anticipated, with much to see and enjoy about the cultural history of the Native Americans and the story of building a monument to honor them. I then wound my way around on scenic Highway 87 through the Black Hills on my way to Mount Rushmore. I made several stops along the way in good habitat to find one final western species, the mountain bluebird. Well, I paid for that roadside stop. It so happens to be that I stood on a log that uh, had a swarm of ants in it and uh, <laughs> I got eighth of a mile down the road and all of a sudden I had things crawling all over me. <laughs> I had several dozen ants crawling all over me. <laughs> so I had to pull off the road and brush them off. I hope I'm not carrying any of them home to Michigan. Having failed to find a mountain bluebird, I continued on, winding my way down to Mount Rushmore. There were definitely lots of people, and with the high traffic volume, I wasn't expecting to find a lot of birds. I did find Audubon Warbler, but the focus was to see the monument. After spending time at Mount Rushmore, it was time to actually leave and head home to Michigan. But there would be birds to see along the way, of course. I've enjoyed my couple of days here in the Black Hills National Forest, but it is time for me to move on. And unfortunately, that means heading home. So, farewell to the mountains, and uh, until next time. I headed east toward the Badlands, and along the way were some prairie dog towns where I was going to look for burrowing owls. Suddenly, something caught my eye. This hovering bird made me think I had found a kestrel, or maybe even better yet, a prairie falcon. I quickly pulled over and got my scope out. Much to my surprise when I analyzed the video, it was a burrowing owl. Very shortly after, I found a prairie dog town and also several burrowing owls sitting on their burrows, calling preening, and sometimes getting up and flying around looking for food to catch. I set up shop with my camera and my scope to get a good look at both the prairie dogs and the burrowing owls. Due to poor planning, I was really low on gas, and the only town between me and the Badlands was scenic South Dakota. This ghost town didn't look much like it was going to provide me the gas I needed. But, lo and behold, not a soul in town, and yet there was one working gas pump. I filled up just a couple of gallons because of the price, and headed on down the road toward Badlands National Park. The birding was not very exceptional, 
However, the rugged beauty of this place was definitely worth the effort. I did add blue grosbeak and a couple of other species during my visit and realized I was getting very close to 100 species for South Dakota. Could I break the centennial mark? I made several extra stops on my way before the sun went down, and just as it went down, this great horned owl helped put me over the top at 102 species for South Dakota. After driving late into the night and only getting a couple hours of sleep in my car somewhere in Minnesota, I got up the next morning and drove over the Mississippi River into Wisconsin. I then realized I would be driving close to Baraboo, Wisconsin and the International Crane Foundation. Of course, I had to stop. After a video presentation on the facility and its history, I walked the grounds to look at all of the different cranes that they have from around the world. The International Crane Foundation is most famous for its breeding program of whooping crane. They have brought the whooping crane from the brink of extinction to a more viable population. There were also many trails through a variety of habitats that you could hike on and go birding. So, of course I did. One of the best birds I found on my walk was this morning warbler. I was spishing to see once what it was and it popped out and gave me a show. My trip was now finally coming to an end, but I had left a breadcrumb trail of eBird checklists all across my route. And I had changed my eBird map from this to this. My North Dakota birding road trip had taken me 3,500 miles from the upper peninsula of Michigan to Saxim Bog of Minnesota to Lostwood National Wildlife Refuge in North Dakota, Theodore Roosevelt National Park in North Dakota. many back roads in the Dakotas. Spearfish Canyon, South Dakota. Black Hills, South Dakota. Badlands National Park, South Dakota. And with all of the roads I traveled, so many adventures and so many birds. My road trip had finally come to a close as I came back to my pure Michigan. Thank you so much for coming along with me on this adventure. If you haven't yet watched them all, click now for the full playlist of videos. Thanks again for watching and I'll see you on my next birding adventure.